What the Bible Tells, the first English sermon manuscript. The first subject, who did create the world? The one who created the earth and all the living things in it, we call him the God. The God is the only one in the earth and the universe. His name is yod h e u h e in Hebrew, and he himself let Moses know his name as described in Exodus chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. God said to Moses, I am who I am, and this is what you shall say to the sons of Israel. The Lord y o d h e u h e in Hebrew, the God of your fathers, has sent me to you. God furthermore said to Moses, This is my name forever, and this is the name for all generations to use to call upon me. But it is not possible to pronounce. Therefore, at the Christian church, they write his name as YHWH, Yahweh. In all English versions, including the Jewish Tanakh, it is written and pronounced as the Lord. There was Philo at the Alexandria, a city of Egypt, with a large Jewish diaspora population in Greek Roman times, who lived 20 BC to about AD 50. He is one of the most important Jewish authors of the Second Temple period of Judaism and was contemporary with. Jesus of Nazareth, John the Baptist, and Paul. C.D. Young edited the works of Philo. There we could find question and answer of Genesis 2. At the verse 62, Philo wrote as follows. Why is it that he speaks as if of some other God, saying that he made man after the image of God, and not that he made him after his own image. Genesis chapter 9 verse 6. Its Hebrew text and literal English translations are as follows. Hebrew text, Ki Bejelem Elohim et Ha'adam. Literal English translation, for in the image of God, he has made man. Based on the above biblical text, Philo suggested the second date theory, since no mortal thing could have been formed on the similitude of supreme father of the universe, but only after pattern of the second date, who is word of the supreme being. Since it is fitting that the rational soul of man should bear it the type of the divine word. As Moses wrote in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, Let us make mankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them rule over fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky. And livestock, and over all the earth, and over every crawling thing that crawls on the earth. Therefore, man's flesh and animal like soul, growing and moving, and primary intellectual nefeshi, which is called the lower human nefeshi, to be made from earth according to its likeness. However, human. Rational nefeshi, which is called the higher human nefeshi, to be made by the God following the type of the divine word. Apostle John called the word of God as Logos in his gospel. Theologian c h e c h d a d wrote that the Apostle John declared Jesus as Logos in his book of interpretation of the fourth gospel. Philo wrote that the Supreme Father made 
this second date before the creation of the universe and the earth. On the other hand, in the Jewish traditional writings and Midrash, rabbis replaced the Philos Logos with Torah, a divine being. The biblical evidence of the divine being we could find as a chapter 8 of Proverbs only. We could find the word wisdom, Hakema, as an alternative name of Torah. In the Midrash, the God made the Torah before his creation. At the Proverbs, however, the Lord created the wisdom at the beginning of his way. The Proverb chapter 8, verses 22 to 26 is recommendable to read for further understanding the wisdom. About how the Lord took the wisdom, we could find it from Proverb chapter 8, verses 22 to 26. There we could find Hebrew words as follows, Kana, get and acquire, Kasak, that means set in store. Who, that means twist and wreath in pain from childbirth. Therefore, how the wisdom could be existing is beyond human knowledge. We can find that the wisdom pleased as written at the Purbo, chapter 8, verse 30. Then I was beside him as a Amon, that means master workman, and I was his delight daily. However, we don't know the true meaning of the master workman. When the wisdom was beside him, the supreme being at the time of creation. In the Midrash Rabbah Genesis, Rabbi Oshaya commenced his exposition. The Torah declares I was the walking tool of the Holy One, blessed be He. Thus God consulted the Torah and created the Word. However, God doesn't need and wants any help from other than Himself. God gave orders to materials to come into existence. Ramban wrote in his commentary, when he said, Let there be light. And there was a light. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Components of light was shining matter existed in at Hashemaim. The light appeared itself from at Hashemaim when the Lord said, Let there be light. However, the light did not remain in this state all the time. Then God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants, yielding seed, and fruit trees on the earth, bearing fruit according to their kind with a seed in them. And it was so. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. The earth is a sprout, vegetation, plant, and fruit trees, which means God gave order to the earth itself, produced vegetation, plants, according to God's order without any help of Torah. Those waters produced swarms of living creatures, such as fishes, according to their kind, when the God ordered waters to do so. According to Rabbi's tradition, the earth made birds with tidal land. Thus, the waters produced swarms of living creatures, such as fishes, according to their kinds, when God ordered the waters to do so. Torah in the Midrash Rabbah, Genesis, is equivalent to the wisdom, Hakema, of Probo, chapter 8, verse 1, and the philo of Alexandria, called the wisdom, as Logos of God. Accordingly, C.H. Dad said Logos in the Gospel, according to John, is equivalent to the Logos, called by Philo, Alexandria. And finally, John the Apostle interpreted 
the Logos as the Son of God. Hence, Jesus Christ is the Logos and the Son of God undoubtedly. In the Proverbs, the wisdom was created by the God before the creation of the universe and the earth. However, the Son of God was begotten by the God the Father, and it is beyond the human knowledge how it happened in one God. The Word of God is also beyond the human knowledge to understand and express in any worldly human language. The second subject about the process, how the God created a world of time and material. The Lord exists in an eternal spiritual world, and he created an enormous space, and he built a material universe which is restricted by time. The material universe which the God created shall be vanished with its space when the God take everything which are in need of him. Probably they will be burned by the fire of God, as Peter prophesied in his letter, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7 and 10. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being resolved for fire, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heaven will pass away with the Lord, and the elements will be destroyed with the intense heat, and the earth and its works will be discovered. At the same time, the God created angels following his nature of spiritual appearance, so they are spirit. They are called as angelos, which mean a messenger. They were created by the Lord to be his messengers, but their duty is not limited to the messaging. They do everything to materialize God's will as Exodus chapter 12, verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, but when he sees the blood on the intel and on the two door posters, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come in to your house to strike you. Here the destroyer as an angel to put Egyptians dead in this night. Second King chapter 19 verse 35. Then it happened that angel of the Lord went out and struck 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. And when the rest got up in the morning, behold, all of the 185,000 were died. They are examples what the angel would perform other than messaging. They saw what and how the Lord created, but not assisted him in his creation work with any efforts. The Lord created two things from nothing, and those were substantial materials. Ramban declared that those were substance of materials he called Hellenic word hule, the stuff out of which a thing is made. That means material, matter, stuff, and so on. At Haaretz, at Hashamayim, these were substance of the earth and the substance of heaven, I mean universe. Ramban, Rabbi Moshe ben Nahman, as his full Hebrew name, was wide renowned as a scholar, physician, sage, philosopher, poet, orator, and defender of the faith, who was an official spokesman for jury before the ruler of his country, the king of Aragon. In his commentary, Ramban claimed that the Lord brought forth from total and absolute nothing 
a very thin substance devoid of corporal reality, but having a power of potency, fit to assume from and to proceed from potentiality into reality. This was the primary matter created by God. It is called by Greek, Hule. After the Hule, he did not create anything, but he formed and made things with it. And from this Hule, he brought everything into existence and clothed it with finished condition, which means anything God made doesn't need a time to grow to be in its finished condition. Literally, Hebrew et is used as together with, such as in Genesis chapter 6, verse 13, Weihinneni mashehitam et haaretz. Behold, I will destroy them together with the earth. Ramban translated et into substance. Hule in Hellenic word. The God created Hule as the primary matter of the universe, and the earth separated by the expanse. He called the primary matters of the universe as upper water, and of the earth as lower waters. And the heavens and all that is in them consist of one substance, and the earth and everything that is in it consists of one substance. The God created these two substances from nothing. They alone were created. Everything else was constructed from them. Ramban persisted it in his Genesis commentary. In the Tanakh, the Jewish English version of the Bible, Tohu, is translated into English as unformed, and Bohu is translated as void. Ramban interpreted their meanings as follows. Quoting from the Rabbi Nechunya ben Hakana's comments in Midrash, that is the meaning of the verse, and the earth was tofu, without form, ba bohu. And boy, what is tofu? It is a thing which astonishes people. It was then turned into bohu. What is bohu? It is a thing which has substance, as it is written. Bohu is a composite of two words, bo and hu. In it, there is substance. When Moses saw at Haaretz and at Ha Shamaim, it was Tohu at first. Then those substances changed themselves as Bohu. That is what Ramban interpreted the conceptual meaning of Hebrew Tofu and Bohu. Now the problem is how Moses found the process of their Tohu and Bohu status. There have been endless arguments who wrote the creation story in the Bible. But I don't think it is so important who wrote the creation story in the Bible. On the contrary, it is more important who saw the vision of creation provided by the God, which means to whom the God provided the vision of his creation process when and where. Ramban insisted that the Lord explain the creation process to Moses, but I couldn't agree with it. The Lord showed Moses a vision of all process of his creation works, and Moses described them in his contemporary language of Hebrew in his time. And that's why Moses wrote Tofu and then Bohu in accordance with with his feeling. But no one had seen the creation process itself. When the God actually, bara, that means create, and asa, that means make, even Adam himself was created 
on the sixth day, after all other things in the earth and in the universe were made. Among persons described in the Bible, Moses was the only one to whom the Lord might give the vision of his creation process. Since he showed him the original Messiah tabernacle located at the paradise described in Exodus chapter 25, verse 8 and 9. As far as he showed the original tabernacle in the paradise, he eventually showed Moses the vision of his creation process. At a time when Moses stayed at Mount Sinai, therefore, Moses is the only person to whom the Lord showed a vision of his creation process. The third subject, the state of creatures when the God created them. The Lord made all living creatures in their complete growth status. After creation, all the living creatures became declined in health gradually until it shall be vanished. Therefore, since Adam was sent out of the Garden of Eden to the ground from which he was taken, the Lord should maintain the natural weather condition to let all the creatures could keep their lives in the perfect status. Isaiah the prophet described the state of the world in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6 to 9 as follows. And the wolf will dwell with the lamb, and the leopard will be down with young goat, and the calf and the young lion and the fattened steer will be together, and the little boy will lead them. Also the cow and the bear will graze, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The nursing child will play by the hole of the cobra, and the wind child will put his hand on the viper's den. They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Prophet Isaiah might believe this will be at the time of the coming of Messiah, since he described him as a shoot from the stone of Isa, the father of David. However, I believe the prophet Isaiah saw the vision of the world from the time Adam was taken away from the Garden of Eden until it was destroyed by the flood at the time of Noah. In such a complete natural environment, Adam lived 930 years, Seth lived 912 years, and Oshi lived 905 years, Kenan lived 910 years, Mahalalel lived for 895 years, and Yaret lived 962 years, and Mudusale lived 969 years, and Lamech lived 182 years and fathered a son, Noah. Then Lamech lived 777 years in his old days. The natural life span of a human being was almost 1,000 years before the flood. The same principle which was applied to the creation of living beings might be applied for non-living things in the earth and the universe, including sun and moon. The Lord made the earth itself, including its surface and its multiple layers as follows. Cores divide into inner and outer cores. Mantles, which is the layer, silicate rock between the crust and the outer core. The earth's mantle is divided into also two major rheological layers. Rheology is the study of the change in the form 
in the flow of matters, embracing elasticity, viscosity, and plasticity. The rigid rhythm of fear, rocky part of the earth, comprising the uppermost mantle, and the more viscose asthenosphere, weak zone of upper mantle that underlies the stronger lithosphere, separated by the lithosphere asthenosphere boundary. The lithosphere and overlaying crust make up tectonic plates, which move over the asthenosphere and the Lord implanted various ores into the lithosphere and the crust, such like metal ores and furthermore, coal, drain, crude petroleum oil, natural gas, and uranium ore. He also implanted various precious stones and gems in there. When the Lord made the earth, he implanted various ores into the lithosphere and the cross because he foresaw the human mechanical development in mining those ores. From the beginning, the Lord made the earth as it is now. He made cultivable land, desert, forest, plain, mountains, hills, plateaus, rocks, pebbles, sandy beach, and its completed form with its natural decomposition. The Lord didn't need such a terribly long period of time, such as several billion years, in make its surface decomposed, as we could see now. At the time of flood, the shape and the composition of the Earth's surface were changing, especially high mountains, deep valley, ocean trenches, which were made by the formation of convergent and divergent and transform plates, I mean a tectonic place, boundaries. At a time of creation, surface layer of the earth, the crust and lithosphere were merged in a lump all around the earth, and the surface of earth was stable and calm. At the end of 150 days flood, the Lord broke up the crust and lithosphere layers vertically into pieces, which are called tectonic plates, and shocked the earth strongly to form the convergence or the divergence between neighbor plates. At the time, there was a strong rubbing between lithosphere and the underlying mantles to produce lava, which was gathered in a chamber of magma, which was then making volcanic eruption to form a high mountain. The first subject, diastrophism, the process by which the Earth's surface was reshaped by the Great Flood. In order to cover the surface of the Earth with flood, raining was not enough. Today it is classified as heavy rain when the precipitation more than 50 mm per hour. At a time of Noah, even to extend it up to 100 mm per hour, rainfall for 40 days and nights might cover all around the surface of the Earth just less than 100 meters deep. Today, the average height of the Earth from the sea level is around 840 meters, but we don't know how it was at the time of the Great Flood. Moreover, we don't know how high the highest mountain was at a time. In order to calculate the volume of water to cover including highest mountain, I assume the deep of water covered the earth at a time of the great flood was less than 1,300 meters. Today, there are five large oceans such as Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Southern, and Arctic Oceans, and the seven continents such as Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, and North and South America. 
Among them, Asia and Africa are divided by a narrow and short artificial Suez Canal. And the North and South America are also divided by a narrow and short artificial Panama Canal. Europe and Asia is one land conceptually divided into two by the Ural Mountains and Black Sea. Geographically, today the land is not one. It looks like uh, several continents are locating among oceans. If all the world to be taken out, the land is one with several huge empty pools connected. However, the God said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 9 that the water below the heavens be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. It appears that the dry land was one as combined, and the water was also one as combined. But today the land is divided into several continents if we follow the biblical creation. At the beginning of God's creation, there should be only one ocean opened and one continent composed with dry land, where it's inhabitable. And in Genesis chapter 7 and verse 11, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst open, and flood gates of the sky were opened. To this the volume of four oceans, such like Atlantic, Indian, Southern, Arctic, is 664.96 million cubic meters. And flood volume covered the earth with 1,300 meters deep was estimated 663.219 million cubic meters. Therefore, we could assume that the above four oceans were covered by dry land as its ceiling floated up the deep and supported by some structures at the time of God's creation. That's why Moses called them fountains of great deep, which burst open to form the great flood. When the Lord made the earth the rotation axis vertically perpendicular toward the sun, and therefore there was no four seasons, and along the same latitude, tempers were same in bound, and wind was soft, no movement of cloud, and no rain was made. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 6, A mist used to rise from the earth and water the whole surface of the ground. Therefore, there was no need to rain, nor accordingly no need to make, keep, and move the cloud in the sky. All the crust and lithosphere of the earth formed into one lump, and there is no tectonic plate in the earth. The earth was calm and comfortable for the living creatures in the surface of the earth. In order to burst out all the fountain of great deeps, certain monstrous mighty pushing force should be used in every great deep simultaneously. That force might not be natural one, but divine one. After pushing waters out mostly, the deep would be emptied. The ceiling dry land and its supporting structures should be sustained for the first 150 days of the great flood. In order to do so, the gravity of the earth should be lightened accordingly. After the first 150 days of the great flood, the Lord broke all the crust and a little sphere of the earth vertically into pieces and shook them roughly and retrieved the gravity to normal conditions. And accordingly, the structures in the deep sustained the ceiling dry land were dismantled. The flood water which was covered the earth for the first 150 days flew into those emptied depths for the next 150 days. At that time, the earth's rotational axis might be tilted by 23.5 degrees to make four seasons in the earth, and glaciers 
frozen land in south and north polar area have been resulted. Not all flooded water covered the earth, flew into deeps. Among them, some were locked in valleys to form deep and wide lakes, such as Caspian Sea in Asia, the Great Five Lakes in North America, the Victoria Lake in Africa, Lake Baikal in Asia, and so on. For better control of water, lots of them have been constructed to build artificial lakes, mostly in 19th and 20th centuries in river all over the world. When the Lord made the earth, he implanted salt fields and mines, where salt could be obtained enough to meet human need in the earth. After the flood, water covered the surface of the earth, flew into empty deeps to this ocean, with containing salt and other minerals melting in water. Today, there are lots of salt mines in the earth. Even in North America, there are 20 notable underground salt mines, such as Avery Island in Louisiana, Cleveland in Ohio, Detroit in Michigan, and so on. Both rock salt and sea salt are used in kitchen and chemical industry. At a time of great flood, water prevailed all over the surface of the earth, and accordingly, lots of salt in the surface of earth or shallow storages, which could be easily penetrated, were melted into the water as well as other minerals. After the great flood, water from rain has been gathered in rivers and they deliver the salt and minerals to the sea. Today, the sea salt is produced by evaporating seawater conversely. After the flood, the surface of the earth's crust and lithosphere has not been stable, since it was divided into many tectonic plates by word of God. Magma is proceeded by melting of the mantle and or the crust, at various tectonic settings by rubbing between the lithosphere and underlying upper mantle. The melts of mantle and lithosphere migrate upwards through the crust, where they are thought to be stored in magma chambers. During their storage in the crust, magma compositions may be modified by fractional crystallization and a contamination with crustal melts, magma mixing, and degassing. Major portion of magma is silica, which is a compound of silicon and oxygen. Magma also contains gases which expand as the magma is erupted. Therefore, this title of sermon was listed as follows. What the Bible tells, number one, creation and destruction by flood. 